I don't know if I told you this or not. Maybe I did, but I, you know, how I knew you were stand up, and you know, your name is, you know, Wicks. You don't hear that name every yeah. day, but we never actually um, were introduced. But I was in a tattoo shop, and you came in and you got a tattoo <laughs> on your finger right here. <laughs> oh yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You were. were the- yeah, I was there. I was I was in another chair. I was getting something on my chest. <laughs> like and this tattoo. this guy comes in and <laughs> and um I guess uh it was on um on Music Row. Yeah, yeah. And uh that's a husband and wife ta- yeah. tattoo part. Yeah, right? Music City, right? She yeah. Wor- yeah, she was working on me. And you came in and <laughs> and and I think that you you had a dilemma of doing it on your lip, or maybe you said something about it. But anyway, you you got that right there, and and um, I heard you guys talking about doing stand up and stuff. And yeah, and that's actually the second one. That was the first one. <laughs> and I did that because I used to do this. I don't, you know, I just use a sharpie, and I'm like, well, hell, I'll just do that, and you can put it just, just uh-huh. silly now. You know, when you get all those people, they're like, oh, so you're a comedian, huh? Well, yeah, right. say something funny. Yeah, well, this is all you're gonna get. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. We already started rolling, so fantastic. Yeah, they can't say this is scripted. That's for sure. No doubt. We have the one and the only Digger Cleverly. We are very lucky to be here right now. We're very lucky. Thank you. Thank you for that thunderous applause <laughs> of one. We'll dub that in. You know, <laughs> we'll dub that in later. Welcome to the Tap and Average Joe's podcast, and we are very excited today because we are with the one and only multi-talented. Digger Cleverly of the Cleverleys. How are you, sir? I'm good. It's a pleasure to be here. Boy, I tell you, thanks for taking the time. I know you've got a busy schedule. You're up here in Nashville. How often do you get to Nashville? Uh, you know, we try to get up here once or twice a month. You know, it's according to what we got going on. And, mm-hmm. and uh, we used to keep a place up here. Um, um, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, I, I married a midget one time. And and uh, she was a mom of my two boys, Digger Jr. and Digger Jr. Jr. <laughs> and I met her... Um, at the Shelby County Fair, she was uh, doing some extreme midget wrestling, and um, I went there. I was guessing weight, and um, I had just come out of a horrible relationship, and I was walking along the midway, and I saw that sign. It intrigued me. I wanted to see some little people wrestling. Mm-hmm. And what makes it extreme? That's what I was thinking. You know, how extreme could it be? Mm-hmm. And. Uh, and it was pretty pretty dang extreme. I w- went in there and uh, and she won her match and she stole my heart. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't long after that uh, uh, I went around to her little uh, her little Barbie trailer and and asked her for a, a walk along the midway and mm. I bought her a stickless corn dog and. Um, she always got the stickless kind because of her dinner work. Mm. Uh, she was missing a couple of teeth, and but she was missing all of her teeth, except for them. Them three right in front, they was just little black nubs up against the gum line. Oh, and she used to open bottles and stuff. But and every time she smiled, it looked like she had a mouthful of crickets. Oh, <laughs> I, I love to hear her whistle. <laughs> One uh, one sultry evening, I was kissing a mole on her sweaty neck, and and it turned loose. Oh no! And uh, that's when we know she was sick. Oh, uh, but she uh, was she didn't like, die of an illness. It, it was wasn't a, like uh, Lyme disease or anything, was no, it? No, no. What it was, uh, it was a chemical reaction to mayonnaise. Oh. She worked in a mayonnaise farm, and uh, one time she was whisking in the egg yolks, and a paddle wheel caught her apron string mm. and pulled her in. She's a little, you know. Oh, uh, couldn't. But I guess it was that, um, it was that a reaction she had from that swim and that mayonnaise that did it. Mm. it we got a jar of her on the mantle. <laughs> She's no longer with you? No, she's not. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, every time the boys get to missing her, they go make a sandwich, and then they get dysentery because she expired six years ago. <laughs> but enough about that. <laughs> so 
So you come to Nashville. Mm-hmm. Do you even recognize it? How long you been coming here? I've been coming here for 15 years. Uh, now, my daddy and, and his three brothers started the Cleverly Trio. And and they had been coming here for years. And home is Arkansas, correct? Uh, it is. Mm-hmm. Ozark Mountains. Uh, we live uh, in uh, Canespur, which is just a kind of a suburb of Mountain View. Mm. And uh, uh, But we've been into... The, you know, our whole family plays music. In fact, um, you know, my boys both played in the band. Uh, my brother Miles and uh, has played in the band. Uh, they've all gone and done other things at the moment, but uh, you you never know what family member is going to be on stage with us at any given time, you know. And how frustrating is it for you as the patriarch of the band mm-hmm. to – balance between family and business it it's tough because i'll tell you i watched an interview with uh vernon dean Uh uh-huh and uh he kept in it was your interview and he kept interrupting you in that hotel room and it's i I could see the frustration you were having it gets it you know it's that family dynamic Mm -hmm. you know you love each other you know we, we are brothers we love each other like brothers we fight like brothers you know um any sisters uh, we do have uh, uh, a couple uh, sisters. Uh, Valma, she is the mother of my two nephews, Harvey D and Harvey C. <laughs> What's the C and D stand for? Twins. Uh, I, you know, I you'd have to ask her. They, she named them after their daddy. Mm. And they don't play instruments. Yeah, no. Uh, actually, Harvey Harvey D uh, was in the band. He played snare in the band uh. for a while, uh, and then he moved out to to Myrtle Beach and uh, was working for that uh, Carolina Opry out there. Oh yeah. Now, yeah. would you consider that to be uh, small potatoes compared to Branson? Because you you've spent a lot of time in Branson. I think it's all performing wigs. Mm-hmm. Honestly, if whether it's uh, uh, in Myrtle Beach, Pigeon Forge, or Branson, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, honestly, uh, a lot of people might turn their nose up to that sort of thing. Um, I, I think it's good experience, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's all, it's all performing and playing music. It's all entertainment. Do they have as many pancake places? in uh branson no, as they the, do in, uh, in pigeon, pigeon forge, forge is, Boy, they like pancakes something about pancakes and <laughs> pigeon forge you're right and uh, no uh i think the biggest fetish in in uh the ozarks is probably feet feet yeah like, i know a lot of like people that feet? know that just feet oh i know a lot feet? of people that's hooked on feet there's something about them when i was a deputy uh in uh, stone county um i did that for a while well wow. Is when I first noticed my fetish with feet. Um, and you like feet? I love them. Love them, right? I love them. All kinds. Yes. Even the ugly ones. Yeah, well, it's just something about them. Hmm. Now, uh, now, if they're all corned up and, you know, mm-hmm. got them toenails that's thick as 12 coats of paint, mm-hmm. you know, no. No. I want them cleaned up. But I tell you what I do like. It's that, you know, the little blonde hairs on a woman's toes? Yes. Especially the big toe, because mm-hmm. they're more prominent. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was a deputy, I busted a bunch of field hippies for an illegal shiitake operation. Oh, wow. And um, and there's this one little stinky hippie chick that had the prettiest feet. And I just wanted to take a straight razor and just shave her little toes and... Keep the hair? Yeah, and just roll it in a ball and just have this little fine ball of little blonde hippie toe hair. Do you think that would be softer than belly button lint? Oh, I, oh belly button lint. That's a different conversation. Mm. Don't you just want to... Have you ever gotten to do it? No. Even as a man of the law? No, I never got a chance to do it. I, I thought about... You know, uh, uh, getting an executive order and making it happen, but no, I don't want to use my power. No, way. no, it's got to come naturally. It does, or it doesn't do nothing. For do me. you know when I went to uh, Middle Tennessee State down here? 
moved down here from Cincinnati, Ohio. And I was in this class and I took tap dance as my elective because I figured there's going to be a lot of girls in that class. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was. And a couple guys. Mm -hmm. But the lead teacher mm -hmm. had this beautiful hair Come and on. she wore red hot chili peppers. Sure. Oh, there you have it. Oh, my gosh. In love. And we did a shuffle ball change to Papa's Got a Brand New Bag. Uh -huh. And she was in the front telling everybody what to do. And I'm in the back. She's giving us the rundown. Of course, it was when I started the class, it was kind of in the, in the winter, you know. And then it started to get. So as we got into the class, she started wearing less. I'll be darned if at one point she goes, okay, you guys in the back. And let me tell you. The arm hair coming out of her. Oh. I mean, I like the red hot chili peppers, but <laughs> I do too. That was a whole nother. Yeah. That was intimidating. Yeah, wool blankets. Mm. I'm not into that. Mm -mm, me neither. But no. the toes now. The toes, but see, the toes. It's it's not them big black hairs you could floss with. Yeah, mm -hmm. puberty hairs. Right, it's yeah. not that. It you know the toes. It still just got this little buzz. It's like a peachy kind of. Yeah, it's yeah. just like that little hair on a. You know the the small, small. Of the woman's back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like them little hairs. You know, the ones that what well, ain't never been hit with a razor. Now, you know? is it just the toes, or is it ankle down, like the whole foot? Anything from the? I like the foot. Mm -hmm. I, if it's shapely, you know, I don't want a bony foot, and I don't want one what looked like it's been in ballet shoes a long time. Mm, right. I, I'm honestly you was talking about tap dancing. Have you ever seen a dancer's feet? Yeah. Oh, they are, you know, looks like hobbit feet. They're muscular too, yeah. Yeah, they are. And they got corns and nodules on them. That's how they stay on their toes. Right. It's they like a kickstand. Kickstands, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. It's almost cheating really. It it almost is, but I think that's just that's just God's way of of keeping them balanced that way mm -hmm. is he helps them grow a little kickstand out the side of their foot. Now, do you think you could ever be a reflexologist or would it be too distracting for you? I don't think I could stand it. Right. Just be too much. It would be too overload. much. Especially if I drank a Red Bull. <laughs> you know. Get to rub it on the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, you guys have the record, which cash crop. Uh, I got lots of questions. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to alpacas. Uh, I, I've got to get in your brain. Um, That's our family. You know, we have a farm right the, back home. In and it's alpaca. called the clever, and it's a uh, it's a functioning farm. It is selling all kinds of products, alpaca related, or yeah, but, yep. yeah. We got alpaca, hundred percent alpaca milk. We got a hundred percent alpaca. Um, sausages and and uh, other meat products uh, do you went, get attached to them are um, they like dogs or are they no, like cows uh, yeah i mean they're but you know you know that's that's the whole part of being on a farm you know i remember the first time that um i had a pet chicken and watching my grandma wring that chicken's neck but boy it was good that night mm. you know you forgot about it right i forgot all about it that crispy skin mm-hmm and so that just prepared me for a life on the farm. That's just the way it is. But, you know, they're there for our enjoyment. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not supposed to have a life of enjoyment. You know, they're there for us. Do you Do give we tours? harvest their wolves? Pardon me? Do you give tours? To, I'd give you a tour. Yeah. Shoot, yeah. I'd love that. Yeah. Can I'd, you ride an alpaca? No, they're not really strong enough. Now, that uh. we put the kids on them. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, when... when uh, the kids is getting in the way. We just put them on an alpaca. Do they kick like a horse if they're upset? You get you don't get behind them. You know they're them? skittish, but they're not violent. Oh, okay. Good. You know that's why it's so easy to manhandle them. Mm. Um, you know, like um, you know, we don't want to know want them to know that they're gonna die. gonna go to their imminent death. Mm -hmm. You know, we trick them into thinking it's feeding time. <laughs> well, it is feeding time for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But we raise, we raise on we raise the wool. We uh, we do make blankets and uh, and um, hundred percent wool women's undergarments, mm -hmm. uh, which I know have got to be comfortable. It seems uh, like it'd be hot. Is yeah, it, it now? Is wool, is it is alpaca wool? Cashmere. Is that what it is? That's what it is. I'll be darned. Yeah. So one of our alpacas could end up on your plate. <laughs> 
Mm. Or in your wife's pants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have you ever had um, any involvement with uh, Kiviet? Say again? Kiviet? No, sir. It's You know the big buffaloes that are up in Alaska that just stand out there in the freezing cold? Yeah. They harvest the underbelly of it. And, and I bought a hat, and it's made from, I forget the ox, but it's called Kiviet. And the hat is made by the locals, uh, the, and, and in the hat is a, a diag- or a, some kind of pattern that is representative of that, of that tribe that made that uh, hat. And I, we were up there watching one of the infomercials on the television, and... Um, had some time to kill before Monday afternoon football, and we decided to go over and see this place, and went in there, and it was amazing. But the operation, uh, the, just the whole, all of it, yeah. And it was so soft and and very. I mean, it was like fifty. I think so. Fifty times uh, warmer than wool. I think. Really? Yeah. And do you it, it, expensive? I went in there, and they said, "Would you like to?" You know, I was like, "I want to get something." I'm in Alaska, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears> boy. <throat> I was gonna get, I was gonna get a blanket, and you know how much they wanted for a blanket? What's that? Five thousand dollars. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So, I just got a, a hat. Yeah. And that's it. And let me tell you, and it's like a microwave on your head. Still a glove. Just give me a finger. Just give me a pot holder. <laughs> yeah. That's all I can afford at this place. So they have <coughs> cashmere. <clears throat> what else do you get out? You get food. Is it like a pig? We use everything but the squill. We use everything. Mm-hmm. We do. Uh, we. We uh, grind their bones and use it in ceremonies. <laughs> what kind of ceremonies? <laughs> uh, we we uh, it's it's just, we make a little drink out of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Put a little flour in there <laughs> and, some, and some moonshine. And uh, I don't know if it's the moonshine or the bone that that. Uh, that sends you on a trip. Is it like peyote kind of thing? Kind of get you goofy? Yeah, it does get get you kind of goofy. It's been passed down for generations. Mm. Uh, mo- most people, and it came from Peru. Uh, that's that's where the alpacas, we got our alpacas. Does it have a name? Because I would, you know what I would call it? What's that? Alpaca punch. Alpaca punch. Mm-hmm. That's clever. That's two. Oh, well, coming from a cleverly, that's double clever. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I, I'll ask Martina Dolores Lopez about that. She's her family's who brings oh, us our okay. alpacas. We wanted. We didn't want a diluted string. Mm. We wanted ones that that were were sure enough. Um, like yeah, the thoroughbred of of the alpacas. Of alpacas yeah. That's right. Um, our stud Mike came from there. No, is it, do you just have one? One stud? Mm-hmm. No, sir. Now, I mean, we've got 500 head alpacas. Wow. Yeah. What do you feed alpacas? Um, you know, these cubes that we feed them that is uh, protein cubes, mm. and and, uh, and they eat hay and grass and stuff like that. You know, do they, they make any noise? They forage and just a... Well, that's it. Nah. Is it a cute noise? It sounds, it sounds good. It cute. is a cute. The little ones... And that's the sad part. Um, you know, a lot of ours is also rescued alpacas. Those are the ones we send to slaughter. Mm. Uh, is we, it like the sad TV shows where they're all emaciated and chained up? In the arms <laughs> of the angel. We, uh, <laughs> we uh, rescued uh, several from an alpaca fighting ring. Oh, come on. Yeah. Who could it, do such a thing? I don't know. I don't know. And we put them right in the slaughtering pen because uh, they had lived a cruel enough life. Mm-hmm. And plus, we don't want to use our expensive, uh, like you said, thoroughbred mm-hmm. alpacas for slaughter. We just use the rescue ones. And do they, were they forced to bite each other? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And what they do is it's violent. It's a violent thing. But they they have to be taught that. They right? swing their heads like bats. You wow. know they got really long necks, mm-hmm. and they'll swing them heads like bats, and uh, and and beat each other with the heads. Wow! Oh, it's a violent thing. Have you ever been hit with one like that? I have. I have absolutely. Mike, now you don't want to get in the pen with him when he's in rut, because mm. he will make you his bitch. Oh wow! Yeah. 
he is that he's that aggressive whenever mm-hmm. it comes to that. Well, aren't we all? Yes. Yes, we are when it comes to that. When it comes to that. Yeah. I imagine you throw some unclothed, unshoed toes in front of you, and you might get a little... Uh, or a midget. Or, or a midget. What about a midget's toes? Oh, the hairs are so fine. It's like the skin of a grape. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've covered alpacas. This would be a great time to let everyone know to go to the Average Joe's Superstore. AverageJoe'sSuperstore.com. You can receive 20% off by putting in the promo code TAP2. Damn. So you could get your own album, Cash Crop, 20% off, really stick it to the label. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and that's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking it to the label. <laughs> now, where is your favorite place, and I would assume it would be the station in, where would be your favorite place to perform in Nashville and then uh, abroad, like in the, in the country? You know what's... The cool about Nashville is there's a lot of iconic rooms here that if you're a musician that you, you want to play, and, and Station Inn is, is definitely one of those. Do you think that place is going to be there? Because do you see that growth going up around Isn't that it? crazy? It looks like a cartoon. Every now. time I come here, there's there's another crane mm-hmm. in the skyline. you know. Uh, but, yeah, they're, they're growing up around old JT down there. Yeah, they are. And, uh, and he's held firm. I mean, he's held his held on to it and well that's if if that place goes nashville's just completely jumped the shark oh yeah you know yeah and you know we got to play the opry too that was another thing for us to stand in that circle and were you I, nervous uh i was excited mm-hmm. you know um that's lifelong my, dream right yeah my mm-hmm. dad's lifelong dream and you know everybody in my family just wanted to go to the to the uh, play the Opry and stand in that circle. Um, so, but yeah, the Station Inn. Uh, we, we love we love playing there because it's so intimate, you know. And and um, you might get a couple hundred people in there, and it's a packed room, and it's always full of energy. And people that come here want to. They they love music, mm-hmm. you know. They they want to listen to you pick and play and sing, and they appreciate that aspect of it. Other places you go, you know, they might be looking for can cans and dancing girls. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. they they hear with their eyes instead of you know listening to music. Not in Nashville. Nashville is a great music town. Uh, it's but, tough to watch you guys up on stage because you don't know who you want to watch more. I mean, everyone really does an amazing job. I mean, it's it's incredible. Thank you. You've done it, a fantastic <clears throat> job. Thank you. You know, we don't we don't claim to be the first group to ever do covers. Of, right of you know uh pop or or uh you know we might be the first bluegrass group to do hip-hop covers but i, I would think so um although the gourds did gin and juice oh yeah 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 and and that you know we love those guys we've done some shows with those guys and before. i'm sure hasty dixie comes up in conversations I, of course. are those guys I still going group. yeah they're yeah. still going at it i think they do a lot of stuff in europe actually they're that's really what i was, I was gonna there. ask you when are you gonna take it uh, abroad it seems like you guys would just be killing it over there you know um it, it's just a matter of, of getting the right people to help us organize a tour over there um and we've is got a, a really good fan base over there a i don't doubt it they, they know music yeah they do they know legitimate music exactly you know, no question about it have you ever been over there i never have mm. no i've never been uh, i've never well the only time i ever went out of the country was uh a little vacay down to aruba oh wow how'd you like it i liked it mm-hmm. met oj simpson get out i did he before in, or after uh, before or after it was after <laughs> <laughs> it was after okay so it was after his football career uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was <clears throat> that's a true story what buddy. do you have to say were you scared <clears throat> no I, my buddy did it as a joke we were he was staying in the same hotel with us and it was big news as soon as we got off the plane and we couldn't understand, you know, they speak like a, a mix of Portuguese and Dutch and Spanish in Aruba. Like it's, it's, 
it's a weird dialect, so we couldn't really understand. But the only thing we could hear on the radio was O.J. Simpson. Mm. And so the guy driving the cab thought he would explain to us who O.J. Simpson was. Oh, man. Yeah. A mannequin killed two people. <laughs> and we thought that was kind of funny. But we ended up, he was staying at our hotel. And uh, we had a tea time to play golf. And, and uh, my buddy sent him a note. Um and invite him to play <clears throat> golf with us. He sent us a note back saying he would. Wow. <clears throat> and, uh, and and we, we just did it as a joke. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, now we're going to go golfing with O.J. Simpson. You know, a couple things we can't say, you know. Boy, you murdered that ball. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> you can really slice. A horrible slice, <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, but the, the day before we were supposed to play, he actually called our room. Said I'm in the lobby. I'd like to meet you guys, and uh, uh, I can't play golf. I got to leave a day early. So we ran down there and met him, and uh, he was a big old boy, mm -hmm. big, big, big fella. Um, but he he was nice uh, for you know a murderer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. double murderer. He was a nice guy. Well, sometimes you just got to get it out of your system, <laughs> yeah. and then rest of your life you're fine. Yes, yes. That's why I love running the slaughtering hook at the alpaca farm boy i don't know if i could do that you know i don't think i could do that at all you could you think oh yeah once i tasted it reach dip in deep inside <laughs> once i taste it yeah i gotta slaughter one yeah we better get off that <laughs> um what are your inspirations to find i mean these songs that you pick are uh they're just brilliant Thank the, the arrangements are brilliant. The the delivery is brilliant. Uh, how much is that? Is a collaborative effort, or is that just all from your brain? It's it's a collaborative effort. You know, we all put into it. Um, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, one of my favorite covers. You guys do. It's one of my favorites too. Um, you, you know, we all have. Um, you know, this is completely transparent. We all have different music styles and backgrounds that we all come from that we all love mm -hmm. um and you know my first band was that their first group of guys that i ever played with we didn't ever do any gigs but we played punk music hmm. you know um and i've always you know i i can remember you know at one time my favorite two albums was was uh david bowie ziggy stardust and and the beastie boys licensed the ill you know um, and I was obsessed with those albums, and I, I don't think I ever had uh, boundaries to any genre that I really liked, you know. So that would have been like your rebellious teenage years, and then get back. No, to the No, that basics. was just like two years two ago. Two years ago, a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see the punk version of that for sure. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, when I was a when I was a young boy, I. I, I liked uh, you know all kinds of music you know VD he he played a lead guitar in a rock band most of his life. What's it like playing with VD? Um, it it he he's a, an incredible musician. He is he is uh, uh he's different than any you know I wouldn't put him at the you know you can't say he's the best banjo player. Uh, but he's one of the most creative ones. He plays a different style than than you've ever seen uh, from any banjo player because of his lead background, mm. you know. Uh, and he approaches a lot of the stuff he plays um, on the banjo in that, you know, with that background in lead guitar. Um, and it it really works on these covers. Mm. I'll like say the Red Hot Chili Pepper. When I I told him I. You know, I thought it would be a good idea to try using a talk box with a banjo. Mm -hmm. and uh, Like a Peter Frampton kind of thing? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He said, I don't think that's ever been done. And we actually looked around. We never, we hadn't seen anybody using a talk box on a banjo. And it worked out, you know. Uh, and we used that a lot on this album. Um, and we do it a lot in the live show, too. Um, how many songs did you have to pare down to get to to these because you have quite a repertoire yeah you know some some things don't really work out you know mm -hmm. um you know i remember we messed with red red wine for a long time <laughs> yeah love that song <laughs> just love the groove of that song 
but that kind of reggae, that laid back reggae thing. That's a little slow. It for bluegrass. Mm-hmm. Um and and we couldn't really uh we couldn't really do anything with the tempo on that and just just mess it up. Mm. We tried everything we could. It just didn't work out. Some of them don't. Um but then one like the the Red Hot Chili Peppers song, um by the way, it was perfect and uh uh the Beck song Loser. Yeah. You know, that was a no-brainer. It might have taken us, you know, an hour or so to get that arrangement together. Do you ever got, Do you ever get uh, recognized on the road traveling and have people ask you to play songs? Or It's weird. When you come out of an outfit like this, mm-hmm. it's almost like the Clark Kent effect. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we don't get really recognized all that much whenever we're in our street clothes. Which is probably a blessing, I would it, guess. It, it is because... Uh, uh, you know we're so famous Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) completely you've got to look completely on your own we're so famous that (laughs) ew it's just it just gets on your nerves no it it uh the some people in the bluegrass community uh will recognize us you know and and uh and do you know i had a copy of uh, an advanced copy of cash crop your new record Mm -hmm. fantastic couldn't wait to listen to it uh, but I was a little inebriated, and I got an, uh, an Uber, and I asked him if I could play this CD. And as soon as the first song started, he's like, is that the Cleverleys? Really? I swear. Absolutely. I go, yeah, it's brand new. He sat there in my driveway, and we listened to the whole record. He oh, that's a, awesome. He's a big fan. You know, all, a lot of these musicians are doing the Uber thing, and it's it's fascinating to think that you're... Oh, and all these people that are here for the music business and the guy driving your drunk butt around might be playing with <laughs> uh, at the Ryman that night with who knows, you know. You're exactly it's, right. It's incredible. Uh-huh. You know, we were at a, uh Arkansas Razorbacks uh, basketball game, and our version of I Got a Feeling was started playing. Oh, nice. And, uh, and so then I just started sticking my... <laughs> Chest out, you know. <laughs> uh, nobody could give two craps about who it was, but the the dancers of uh, them uh, did a little halftime dance to it. Cheerleaders, and, uh, yeah, the yeah. cheerleaders, little little cuties. Mm-hmm. I was getting a stadium pumping with the Cleverleys. That's great. <coughs> now, do you guys do uh, originals or mainly? Yeah, no, we do originals. Mm-hmm. Standards girl or? with no panty line. Oh yeah, that's yeah, of course. Original. Oh yeah, and of course, uh, uh, cash potophilia. That uh, potophiliac, yeah, potophiliac is, is um is an original. And cash crop, the title song to the EP, is a original. I wrote it. I was inspired. I was, you know, you got them neighbors you don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, you drive by them, you wave at them once in a while. You know, we live good click out in the country, and there was a. Uh, uh, one day there was all these black SUVs with tinted windows out at this old boy's farm, and they had dogs sniffing his mater plants, and um, and he had quite a crop, mm. and like 900 plants. Wow! It was in the paper, 900 plants, and it inspired me to write that. And he won't know about it for eight to ten. <laughs> <laughs> They say that you're supposed to plant corn and then that uh, kind of throw them off. Really, that's, I didn't know that. That's what I've heard. Well, these old boys, they just cleared out a speck of land. They had it out there like it was corn in rows. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, it wasn't a very smart grow, I don't think. They had a, they had um, game cams out there. Oh yeah. And the only ones on the game cam was them <laughs> <laughs> watering and checking that's, and clipping and. That's also called uh, evidence. Evidence. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bag it and tag it. <laughs> well, a couple more years. Who knows the way things are going now? You know, as Willie Nelson said, "Have you heard that album? It's all going to pot." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great album. Yeah, it's a great album. Um, but the medical just passed in in Arkansas, where we're from, and it, that was a surprise. Well, as a farmer, do you? Uh, I mean, what about the hemp aspect of it? Just the the use of hemp. You know, I I actually um, I have a friend who is um, um, a co creator of our the Clarelys TV show, who's who's growing hemp, mm-hmm. and um, 
you know, trying to get into that market because they're starting to to loosen the regulations on on hemp, not pot, right, but, right, but hemp. Mm-hmm. And the, there's a lot of good purposes for that, you know, uses for it. And uh, he's growing his first hemp crop this year, so I wish him luck with that. But um, yeah, there's a lot of good uses for it, I reckon, especially on the medical end. I don't. You really, think you I could, don't really do politics right. and get into all that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't either. I don't either. It's like right. I was telling the women in the bathroom a while ago. <laughs> you know, the only thing I got to say about all this is, you know, there's a lot of perverts out there. <laughs> there are. You know, y'all watch out. You got to be careful. Yeah. And keep your toes covered, for yeah. God's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> Go down a path you don't want to go to. We're excited because uh, we get to do these commercials now. We've got a whole new. You're the third podcast we've done, really. But I think they're going to build as the first because like we got the, the rebrand, tap. the tap, right? Tap. I like that. Yeah, I know. Um, I didn't come up with that, but it was approved by my liver and I. It goes along with the theme. So at this point, go to AverageJoe'sSuperstore.com to get your twenty percent off tap two promo code tap two. Twenty percent off all cold for the lax Sarah Ross, Cypress Spring Moonshine Bandits Slinger Apparel. And, of course, don't forget to pick up your copy of Cash Crop by the Cleverless. Tab. AverageJoe'sOnTour.com. I don't know what I'm supposed to say about that. They just put it on here. Well, I'm excited for you to, to get this. And this is a, it's been real good, real comfortable, real revealing. Good. Yes, it has been revealing. Transparent. Well, there's no reason to put uh, icing and all the bells and whistles on it when it's just good cake. Absolutely. You know, it's Absolutely. just good cake. If the cake's good, you don't need the icing. Yes, sir. That's my theory. Um, you guys are going to be, are you guys on the road? How many shows are you guys doing? Are you Are you, Are you? you staying primarily in Branson? No, we don't do Branson You don't anymore. do it anymore? Okay. No, uh, was there a story behind that? No, no, no story. We did it for a long time, and it was really good to us. You know, we were blessed by uh, the amount of shows and success that we had there. Well, you know, there's different. When I was on the road with Montgomery Gentry, it was an interesting theory because, or not theory, it was interesting the way it would take place because I would get a different crop of 15 people uh-huh. every night that were Jim Beam specialty guests. And so I would take them up on the bus and pour them a drink and have some fun. But the next night, I didn't, they came to me, you know. So in Branson, you, I'm sure you played to packed houses every night. Yeah, well, there was a time that we really did. You know, Branson's kind of going through a transformation. That damn Carolina Opry. Yeah. <laughs> Sons of... Um, but um, our deal was is, you know, when you when you do a schedule in Branson or Pigeon Forge mm-hmm. or Myrtle Beach, a uh, theater thing like that, um, you know, you can't... You, you got you to gotta set a schedule, set it in stone, and you know you got to do a hundred and something dates a year or even more than that wow at you know there was a time that you know we were doing 300 to 400 shows a year in Branson. wow is that two a day yeah two a day Ooh. six days a week Ugh. you know it was a factory job it yeah felt like uh, for a while you were the being slaughtered yeah yeah see how it works and people don't understand oh you just you're just playing music yeah but it you know it that's 11 hour 12 hour day yeah Six yeah. days a week. Did you ever get confused uh, and do do songs? You're like, did we do that one yet? Uh, you know, doing stand up comedy was the most confusing for me. <laughs> I can't Ser- seriously, it was the most confusing. It was like, have I? I feel, I feel like I've done this joke already, right? Not? You know, um, and and you know, from your experience doing stand up comedy, a lot of it is just it's just feeling. It's feeling the audience. It's and you know the cleverly shows the same way oh yeah it's a complete give and take i always give musicians hell because they can sit back there and play the song and if people get it cool if not it's my art and i don't care but exactly you got that exchange of energy much like with what you guys do exactly it's a living breathing thing and if there's a disconnect between you and the audience uh whether it's doing stand-up or as the cleverly mm-hmm. because we do a lot of skit comedy and mm-hmm. stuff in there but if if there's a disconnect then you know you can forget it you know you're not going to be successful at it and um that doing the two shows a day six days a week thing was really really tough it got to be tough um 
but we scaled back quite a bit and when we started doing the stuff on youtube and then started touring and um, working on other things you know they just both they kind of got in the way of each other mm-hmm. we could it when you're doing branching you've got to be there to uh, shake hands kiss babies that's yeah, like a vegas stay right exactly mm-hmm. you know you got to promote it all the time every single day we weren't able to to do that we weren't able to nurture that we were on the road doing this whenever we weren't there and yeah. it just got to be really hard to juggle the two now before we started the podcast we re, you were telling a story about how you what was the, the tattoo that you were getting a sea turtle a sea turtle yeah can i ask yeah why <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've got this whole aquatic piece that <laughs> I really like. I really like the ocean. It's like an aquarium that you wear. It's kind of yeah. Mm-hmm. I got an octopus and coral and. and do you find when you're stressed turtle. out, you just kind of? I just kind of look at it and drift <laughs> off. <laughs> it sounds very tranquil. I'm gonna lie to you. <laughs> What's the next uh, aquatic animal? Do you think? <laughs> I've got a two-year-old daughter. And she loves mermaids. Mm-hmm. So that's probably going to be it. I got to tell this you. This is the softer side of Digger. Well, I got to tell you, I had the greatest Christmas this year because I have nine nieces, and they're uh-huh. from high school down. Two boys, finally, we got this this year. My my sister has a little three-month-old, and then she's got a little five-year-old, I think, four or five-year-old. Uh-huh. Great time. So my... my uh, other sister went out and bought them all these apparently it's a new rage it's a it's a blanket that you wear it's kind of like a snuggie i yeah. guess but the bottom goes out like a mermaid uh-huh. and the girls <laughs> love it well that day i was trying to figure out what to get the little little boy uh for christmas and i went into a just a little convenience store and they had him right there he had a uh, it was a shark that he could wear had the teeth and all that and when a kid <laughs> opens up a gift and screams oh my gosh i've wanted this my whole life i mean you just can't put a price on that so he was going around with this he wore it for like three days straight he's going around chomping the mermaids you know uh christmas is i didn't realize as a parent how tough it was especially a dad because um but you know um the packaging on gifts has become i think it's i think it's like the manufacturer's way of going you know let's see Mm -hmm. let's see this see them open this Mm -hmm. up yeah you know um i didn't know you're supposed to have a cool tool kit like a blowtorch yeah you know nippers um but and you got a two-year-old that opens up um a mer uh, these merma or princess figurines and she knows every princess uh, by name that Disney ever created, mm-hmm. and you buy her this little thing, and it's in this Teflon plastic that is basically welded together, <laughs> yeah. so they can just see it. <laughs> can't get you know, mermaid, 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 <laughs> and they're doing that while you're trying to saw into this thing and get it, at least one of them figurines, out. and then every single one of them is stapled in there mm-hmm. and and with metal twisty ties and. Uh, that that was an interesting thing. So now I'm I'm gonna get my Christmas daddy's toolkit <laughs> uh, handy, or just and if you buy my kid something that needs to be assembled and you don't assemble it, you know don't don't wrap it up. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, that's twice the work. Oh, well, also they're they're so you know it's so intense and they want it right then, mm-hmm. and you got a good hour and a half before you're getting in. You there, know, right? IKEA build before. <laughs> <laughs> they can play with this thing. Uh, it was a great Christmas. How you know. many kids do you have? Um, well, uh, you know, I got my boys, Digger Jr. Mm-hmm. and Digger Jr. Jr. Mm-hmm. They're grown. You know, Jr. Jr., he's on, he's doing technical stuff. And Jr. is a performance artist down in, in uh, New Orleans. And uh, he travels with a freak show. Oh, wow. And he lifts uh, cinder blocks with various body parts. Oh, I've heard of him. Yeah, uh, and then uh, and then we got the two year old baby girl. Is she interested in music? Loves music, loves it. And of course, she's added a lot of music to my 
repertoire. Oh boy, those Disney songs, buddy. Up where they walk, up where they run, up where they stay all day in the sun, wandering free. Wish I could be part of that world. Which one is that? That's Little Mermaid. Oh, it is. Yeah. Have you seen Frozen? Oh, have I seen Frozen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, I have. How many times in a row? Oh, my goodness. Uh, we call Elsa Anna in our house right now. What uh, is that? Uh, that's the characters. That's oh, what Baby okay. Girl calls it. She don't know it by Frozen. Okay. She knows it by Elsa Anna. Elsa Anna. You know, Elsa some Anna. marketing guy at Disney is like, probably got fired over that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's brilliant. You know, I, I never... You know, my boys didn't watch cartoons and stuff like that. Mm. You know, they played with snakes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it, it's a completely different dynamic, boys and girls. You know, a girl wants to love and snuggle mm -hmm. and give daddy kisses and play bar with uh, princess dolls. And a boy wants just to beat the crap out of everything, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, my, or we got a three-year-old nephew that... Uh, he he's swinging from the ceiling fan, and then you know, baby girl's over there with a princess. Look, uh, completely different dynamic. Mm -mm. But I've noticed, uh, you know, I gotta start thinking like a prison guard. <laughs> What's that? You know, I mean, she climbs everything and <laughs> well, picks you, everything. You have to childproof and, the house, right? Oh yeah, you have to. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they didn't for us. No, you know, my uh -uh. dad let us chew cigarette butts. I remember you know? my dad telling me to put a clothespin in the thing. Figure it out. I put a <laughs> put a bobby pin in the. What the heck? I didn't do it after that. Again. Did you ride in the back window of the car? Did you ever do oh, that? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We had a thing. We had a station wagon, wood paneled, nineteen seventy seven, uh, Buick estate wagon. We called it the snagging wagon. I cut the top off of it with a concrete saw when I was in high school. <laughs> but I remember going with my dad. One of my earliest memories, uh, I would have been uh, six years old. And uh, he had to yell at me because it was it was a fancy car at the time when it came out. And I just remember being in there going with the power locks. Click, 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 click. <laughs> until my dad just, he, he was trying to negotiate with the thing. I'm going to click, 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 just going at it loved that car it was a fantastic car. yeah we bounced all over you know from the we had a rumble seat in the back of our station yeah wagon. we, we did had too. an old green plymouth mm -hmm. uh station wagon and um that you know it was it was the nice car and then you know we had it so long that it turned into yeah. dad's tool wagon mm -hmm. and had everything he owned on the dash <laughs> <Safe. laughs> that thing you know uh where's my tuner you know uh, everything he owned was on the dash of that car. I remember going down to uh, pick up my dad. Uh, my one of my kin passed away, and they had a boat down in Florida. Just a nothing big, just a you know eighteen, nineteen foot little ski boat. And I distinctly remember driving down there to get it in the in our station wagon. And we're driving with a boat behind us, the tailgate down. We're sitting on the tailgate, legs swinging, driving on the interstate. <laughs> I mean, clears. It's like I, I'm. I can't even believe that it happened myself. <laughs> it's just like what my, my parents think. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we fought for the fender well. Who was going to sit on the fender well? <laughs> you know, uh, we were out in the back of the truck all the time. One time we were hauling hay, and um, we come across a cattle guard. We were all in the back of the truck, me and these boys, and and. Um, uh, we fought about who was going to ride on top of the stack of hay. Mm -hmm. And so me and uh, our neighbor, uh, Jason, got to ride on the back of the st And, dude, this, this sucker it's was, like, there. so high <laughs> that we were, had to duck to get under <laughs> power lines, you know? And the stack of hay is doing like what? this. <laughs> and we rode it from... Uh, this place called Tambo all the way up to uh, Sunnyland where we lived at and there's a mountain a treacherous mountain <laughs> you gotta go around dead man's curve you know and this stack of hay is is and it's just straight up and down and it, I can't believe they let us do that I think it's uh, I guess it's just a way of where you get that feeling that 
if I screw around, I could die here. <laughs> <laughs> if we went to, it's like the, the, the water park we go to. My dad uh, works for the city, so they get a city day, and we all go down to the water park. And same thing, I remember climbing up these steps. Everyone was just in a line, and you would go down. Now there's four or five different lifeguards, one at the bottom, one at the top. I mean, I don't know how we survived, but I guess you just figure out that you better – Better get your stuff together. Or you could die. Yeah, let's go jump the bridge. <laughs> right. You know? <laughs> and your dad would build you a ramp. <laughs> yeah. He'll figure it out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, you want a good ramp if you're going to do that. <laughs> well, And nowadays, you know, they, you can't even go to the store without strapping your kid in like they're going to the moon, you know? <laughs> it's just so bizarre. <laughs> Uh, what's got? What do you guys got coming up? What do you want to talk about? That's promotional wise. You know, we got to uh, do that. You know, this EP, um, um, we're really proud of it. Um, and Noah Gordon uh, did a great job. Yeah. On it, you know, it might have been his first bluegrass thing that he ever produced, but I wanted, I wanted his his touch on that. Mm-hmm. You know, I love the stuff that he's done. And uh, stuff he's doing at Average Joe's with, with various artists, but yeah. um, it was a real interesting mix between the two of us, um, between the Cleverleys and him. Now, was he trying to Nashville sanitize you guys up, or <laughs> no? You know, uh, he uh, he spanked it. Yeah, uh, every single song on there, he brought and a- added to, and, and um, but I wanted that Nashville sound. I wanted the sound that you guys are doing, or that Average Joe is 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 doing and see you know what kind of kool-aid we can make mm-hmm. between you know our acoustic and bluegrass background and um you know just that that nasty stinky sound that that's coming out of keystone nashville, studios right? nashville yeah. and stinky yeah yeah <laughs> greasy <laughs> yeah greasy. it is greasy i love it no it's a weird and excited. it turned it turned out really well I, at least i think it did i think it did too how did you get with that album cover because if you guys haven't seen it it's pretty pretty awesome it's kind of mesmerizing well i sent in like three ideas one that we got a we got a picture of us peeing into the cumberland <laughs> <laughs> that's the smell you know the walking bridge <laughs> yeah. uh we we got a picture of us all of us peeing into the cumberland and that's uh, actually a great album cover too. well i thought it was but uh shannon shannon uh liked the idea of the alpaca with the gold tooth with the and grill. Uh, the guys here worked their magic uh and I uh, did a really good job. I love the cover too. Now, is that a special alpaca or just one of the five hundred? That's Mike. That's Mike. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. He must Mike. not have been rutting. Well, he had. He was coming off of a heavy breathing breeding season. Oh. You know, he'll breathe three breed three or four times a day. Wow. Um, makes you want Jealous. to be like Mike. Yeah. Yeah. No question <laughs> about that. <laughs> Well, I tell you, Digger, I can't, I can't be more excited or thankful for you taking the time to stop by and tell us what's going on with the Cleverleys. Of course, you guys got the TV, the TV series that is hilarious. Uh, uh, how do you, you want to promote that? Is that on the, the Cleverly site? The right? web series. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's on our 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 uh, YouTube channel, um, and um, but we're excited. We've you know worked for a long time putting that footage together there's a lot of vintage footage there with uh junior and junior junior and and uh harvey d mm-hmm. and miles um I, how did miles get uh lose his eyesight uh he was born that way okay um uh but you know don't feel sorry for him i mean he gets around he cooks cleans and uh drives a bus on straight stretches you know <laughs> yeah, I mean, going he, through the flatlands. he's pretty you know he he's he's actually pretty functional mm. so um uh, but he's off doing his own thing now and and uh uh he's been working with uh, various groups and and uh you know who knows one of these days we might all get back together and and pick and play we pick and play at the house you know mm-hmm. they're on the farm all the time well i tell you nothing sounds better than catching a reunion at the station and absolutely that would be awesome that would be awesome we're gonna get it done we'll might get be a good on. live album there you hey might, you might have come across something there we I'm telling you get with noah and get me some points yeah <laughs> <laughs> well digger again thank you so much hey, for joining man. us here on the tap thanks wicks thank you guys for listening
I guess dude says we're done. Dude says that's, we're done. That's how we know when she's over there whining, wants to go out into the sunlight. Is that a shock collar? Yeah. Doing? Yeah. It's like power steering for a Is dog. that one of them that uh, keeps them from barking? Mm-mm. Oh, okay, good. No. That's no. cruel. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I very rarely have to shock her. I mean, she's really got to have a hold of a baby or something before I you know, <laughs> yeah. shock her like that. She's, it's usually the beep will get her attention. Yeah, you know? right. Uh, but she's and up you there. don't want to shock the baby, so that's you right. Know, it's you like, might just let her get her thing done and standing in a puddle with his jaws on a baby. <laughs> that's not good with a shock collar oh, at all. No. At all. All right, we got to figure out an ending to this thing. Let's just get up and flip off the camera or something. We think. Yeah, let's do it.